Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft, and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In the previous video in this series, we introduced the runge cutter family of methods for numerically integrating ODEs. Here, we're going to look at how we can estimate the errors that we get during a runge cutter integration. We're first going to look at Richardson extrapolation, which is a general technique that we can use to analyze error and also provides us insight into the typical structure of error that we would get with a runge cutter method. We're then going to look at a second approach where we can generalize runge cutter methods to automatically incorporate ways that can allow us to estimate error. We'll first begin by taking a look at Richardson extrapolation. Let's now look at Richardson extrapolation, which is a general technique that we can use for estimating the error associated with a numerical integration method. And let's consider an order p method for the ODE y prime is equal to f of t in y, and here y is an n-dimensional vector. And Richardson extrapolation is based on the picture that's shown in this diagram. We have our true mathematical solution y of t, and starting from y0, we could numerically integrate this to y1 and y2 using two small steps of size h. Alternatively, we could numerically integrate using one big step of size 2h, and that would give us a solution w. And Richardson extrapolation relies on a comparison between y2 and w. So let's begin by looking at the global error for the first small step to y1. So here, we'll write down that e1 is equal to y of t1 minus y1. And for an order p method, we know that that will be equal to o h to the p plus 1. Now, we can write down this general expression here, but the key insight with Richardson extrapolation is that this global error is actually following from Taylor series calculations. And so we could rewrite this and pull out the leading order term in this Taylor series. And that would allow us to write that this is equal to C h to the p plus 1 plus O h to the p plus 2. So we don't know what this constant C is, but we know that the global error will take this form. So now let's look at the global error for the second small step. And here we'll have that E2 is equal to Y of T2 minus Y2. And we'll get several contributions. First, we'll get a contribution where we get the error from step one that is transported, and that will result in a small compounding effect of size OH added to our previous contribution. And we'll also get a new error from this second step, and this can be written as C plus OH times h to the p plus 1. And the reason we have this oh here is because we're evaluating our function f at a position that differs by oh from the previous evaluation. And we'll also have higher order terms. So this term is our transported error from the first step, and this is our new error from the second step. And since these are higher order corrections, this will actually simplify to just 2 C h to the p plus 1 plus o h to the p plus 2. Now let's look at the global error for our step w, 
when we take this big step of size 2h. we'll have that y of t2 minus w is equal to c times 2h to the p plus 1 plus o h to the p plus 2. And we can see that in this case, this factor of 2 is within this term that is taken to the p plus 1 power, whereas for the small steps, this factor of 2 is not taken to the p plus 1 power and we'll make use of this distinction. So let's now write out these expressions again. So we have y of t2 minus y2 is equal to 2ch to the p plus 1 plus o h to the p plus 2. And we have y of t2 minus w is equal to 2ch to the p plus 1, and an additional factor of 2 to the p plus o h to the p plus 2. And we can now subtract one equation from the other, and that tells us then that y2 minus w is equal to 2 to the p minus 1 times 2ch to the p plus 1, plus higher order terms. And if we divide through by this factor, that tells us that y2 minus w over 2 to the p minus 1 is equal to 2ch to the p plus 1 plus higher order terms. So we now have an expression for the exact term that appears in our global error for our second small step. And therefore, we know that if we look at y of t2 minus y2, then we can write that as y2 minus w over 2 to the p minus 1 plus o h to the p plus 2. And this is a very useful expression. This essentially is our leading order estimate for the error of our numerical method. And we could use this as a way to control, for example, the step size in our numerical scheme in order to control these leading order error terms. We can go further with Richardson extrapolation. And now let's define y2 hat to be equal to y2 plus y2 minus w over 2 to the p minus 1. Then we see that y of t2 minus y hat 2 is equal to o h to the p plus 2. And hence, we can see that y2 is an order p plus 1 method. So Richardson extrapolation also allows us to construct a method of one higher order than we started with. And this can also be a useful way to improve accuracy of a numerical scheme. We're now going to take a look at several example programs that will demonstrate Richardson extrapolation. Let's now take a look at the program r underscore extrapt.py that can demonstrate applying Richardson extrapolation to the first order forward Euler method and this will result in a second order numerical scheme. And in this program, we're going to make use of the test ODE, y prime is equal to lambda y, with an initial condition of y of zero is equal to one, and this has exact solution, y of t is equal to eta lambda t. So in this program, we'll first set our initial value of y equal one, 
set our time t equals zero and we'll make use of a time step of size h equal to 0.1 and in the Richardson procedure we need to take half time steps so we'll define hh -H to be h times 0.5 and in this example we're going to make use of lambda equal 0.5 and we're now going to apply the Richardson method up to t equal 2 we'll calculate our analytical solution and we'll print the solutions and the difference between them and we'll now perform a Euler step of size h and store the result in y underscore 1 and we'll also perform two Euler steps of size hh and we'll store the result in y underscore 2 and we can then follow the Richardson extrapolation procedure to combine y1 and y2 in such a way that will give us a second order update to our numerical solution y and we'll finally update the time variable so let's go ahead and run this program and by default this program saves its results to the terminal and so we'll redirect these to a temporary file that we can plot in GNU plot and for comparison I'm also going to run the previous example that we looked at Euler.py that performs the first order forward Euler method and I've set this program to use the exact same constants and step sizes as our Richardson extrapolation code and let me now plot these results in GNU plot And as we saw when we did the forward Euler example, we see that there are noticeable discrepancies between this first order forward Euler method and our exact solution. However, we see that our Richardson approach is substantially more accurate and there are barely any differences between the Richardson solution and the exact solution. And to look at this in more detail, let's now plot the differences between our numerical solutions and our exact solution and indeed we see that the differences for our forward Euler method are quite large on a scale roughly of order h whereas for our Richardson method the errors are substantially smaller and are indeed consistent with second order accuracy so we can go further than this and Richardson extrapolation can apply to any method of order p and one thing that we can do is that in our current code r underscore extrap dot pi we've now constructed an order two method from forward Euler methods and we could now consider applying Richardson extrapolation again to this resulting order two method and that is carried out in the program r underscore extrap 2 dot pi so this is an extension of the previous case and now we will have the same initial variables and constants but we'll also define a new step qh that's equal to our main step h multiplied by a quarter and 
we'll perform the same steps as before. We'll compute a Euler step over the entire step size h and store the result in y underscore one. We'll also perform two Euler half steps and store the result in y underscore two. And we'll also perform four Euler quarter steps and store the result in y underscore four. And we can now make use of Richards extrapolation to combine our y2 and y1 solutions together to give us a second order solution in yr1 and we can combine our y4 and y2 solutions together to give us another second order solution in yr2 and we can then apply Richards extrapolation to these two second order solutions yr2 and yr1 and because this is now a second order solution we have a term of 2 to the 2 or 4 appearing in this denominator and that will now give us a third order update to y so let's now go ahead and run this program and we'll save the results in a temporary file called out2. And let's now add this line to our difference plot. And as expected, the errors for this case are even smaller. And we could now remove the Euler line from this plot and that will allow us to zoom in on the differences between our two Richardson extrapolation results. And now we see that on this scale, the third order Richardson method, it still appears very accurate in comparison to the second order one. And let's now just plot the third order method error by itself. And we see here that the differences are on a scale of 10 to the minus 5 for this case. So this demonstrates that Richardson extrapolation can be a powerful tool for creating numerical methods and can also be used for estimating the error with an ODE integration scheme. One thing to note though is that this procedure of repeatedly applying Richardson extrapolation is often ultimately less efficient than directly designing numerical methods of a particular order. For example, in rxtrap2.py we have to do a number of intermediate calculations in order to obtain our third order solution and the number of calculations that we need are generally more than what would be required to do a third order runge cutter method directly. The second approach for error estimation is to derive butcher tableaus that contain an additional higher order formula for estimating error. So one example is Felberg's order 4 bracket 5 method referred to as RKF45 and it has the following butcher tableau and you'll see here that we have two different final rows here for two solutions yk plus one and y hat k plus one and yk plus one is an order four solution and y hat k plus one is an order five solution and therefore we could integrate using yk plus one but we could use yk plus 1 minus y hat k plus 1 as a way to estimate error. We can go even further than this, and as an example, let's look at Failberg's 7 bracket 8 method. And here, we make use of 13 intermediate steps in order to construct an order 7 solution, yk plus 1, and an order 8 solution, y hat k plus 1, that can be used to estimate error. And the mathematics behind these high order runge cutter methods is really interesting. One thing that we can find is that when we get to high order, 
it's no longer possible to construct an order p solution using just p intermediate steps. And we actually require more intermediate steps in order to construct the solution. So here we see that 13 intermediate steps are required to construct solutions of order 7 and 8. So we see that these butcher tableaus contain a number of very complicated fractions. And you might ask, where do these come from? And these are derived by looking at the truncation error and looking at the leading order terms in it and trying to minimize their size. Another thing that's also beneficial is to have butcher tableaus where there are columns that are predominantly zero. So here, if we look in this butcher tableau, we see that the second and third columns of the beta triangle of coefficients are all zero. And that tells us that once we're past a certain point in evaluating intermediate steps, then K2 and K3, the second and third intermediate steps, are no longer required. And because of that, we could reuse the memory that we had allocated for K2 and K3. And if we were considering a giant ODE system, for example, with billions of unknowns, that could represent a considerable memory saving. So if you're interested in learning more about this field, then I highly recommend the book Solving Ordinary Differential Equations by Hira, Norsa, and Wanner. And in my spring course, Applied Math 225, I look at solving ODEs in a lot more detail.